Hello, this is a 1990 F 140 horsepower. It is a tiller controlled um, pull start. I am in the process of converting it over to an electric start. Also, it's been sitting for some 20 years, so I'm kind of going through it as I go. So this video I'll be installing most of the electronics, probably all electronics, but we'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, taking it from there. So you're gonna, I'm gonna install a starter, harness, cables, and yeah. Now, solely for cost savings, I am using a lot of used parts, but I am getting some new parts. And by some new parts, I mean very few new parts. I do have a new starter solenoid. Um, I have very little luck with these things. They go out of me all the time. So I'm going to install a new one. Um, yeah, so used cables. These are factory cables, as far as I can tell. The reason I think they have that is because they have the warning read the owner's manual label. So it's kind of nice. Um, we removed the choke primer manual thing, this thing, manual primer. Pulled that out of the front of the engine last uh, video. So now we're going to install our new cable grommet. And, uh, yeah, so these are my parts. Some of them, you'll see more. Okay, the first thing I want to do here is get these cables, battery cables, routered and installed. Uh, once the starter goes in, it's going to be in the way of everything. So I'm going to do this first. I'm going to route it under the main in fuel line. Okay, red one is in through. Looks like the black one would come under that as well. There's our negative line and our positive. Put our fuel back together. So one nice thing, I already have the screw for that there. Now I didn't add that, it was already on there, so factory probably put a little crown stud here. That was kind of nice one. So that is where our negative line is going to attach. Do that now, like I said before the starter gets in the way. Um, I did also clean up the ends here, since they are used. They did have a little bit of a corrosion starting on them, so I just took them to the uh, wire wheel real quick, clean up the ends, make sure I get a good connection. All right, ground is installed, so that's good. Now, our positive. My positive, I route it out through the back, I'll come out and up to here, and should sit nicely. I have it under the uh, lower pan mount there. That should kind of give it enough room to get out of the way of anything. That's my theory anyway. Hopefully I don't have to move it later, but if I do, so be it. So there is a hole right here, a hole right here, and another hole block by the starter right here. That is, those are the three points where our starter is going to attach. So, if you've ever taken one of these in or out, you know they're not that easy to get to. So, you don't want any problems with the hardware in the future. So, to overcome that, I'm going to put some of this Permatex Anti-Seize on it. Now, the problem with this stuff, if you coat the entire bolt in it, there's a good chance you're not going to have a very good ground, and I think it's because of that. I've run that a couple of times, whether that's the actual factory case or not, I have no idea. But you take the uh, screws out, you clean that stuff off, put them back in, and you got to ground again. So I've always kind of been in the impression that it does kind of have a problem. So what I'm going to do is leave the front half of it exposed and just put some on the back of the bolt here. That way we'll have a uh, connection inside a little bit, but at least a little bit of anti-seize to make sure we don't have any problems. Whether this is a good idea or not, I have no idea. At the end of the day, the bolt will hold the starter on. And that's all I really care about. Alright, apparently I uh, can't get the starter in. I'm going to start with the bottom bolt here. Same thing, put a little bit of anti-seize halfway up the bolt. Alright, so that one started. So 
now I can jiggle the starter around and get that hole lined up and get our bolt in. All right, now let's get a wrench and tighten them down. And that's really all there is to a starter. They weren't so expensive. I'd like to just buy a new one. This thing's ugly. But the rest of the motor's not new either, so. And if you, if you buy one of the cheap ones, it works for a little while, but they weigh half of what this one does. So I, I like the uh, factory one myself. But they're like, you know, 200 something dollars, so. Used is the way to go, I think. All right, here's my new starter relay, solenoid, whatever. It's supposed to have a rubber boot on it. I didn't order a new rubber boot. Should have. So instead, I got to use this old cracked, falling apart thing. But it just holds it, so you know, whatever. So our new solenoid came with a new hardware pack. Let's dump all those out. We're looking for the lock washer and one back nut. So this wire, right here, comes off of our starter. It's going to install on the bottom of our starter solenoid. So, to ease things up a little bit, I'm going to put that on first and then install the solenoid. Our lock washer and then our nut. Now we have a bracket. Looks like this. I cleaned it up. Well, the hardware. And we also have this little ground strap. That's going to ground the solenoid to the engine. So we already have the provisions for it in our motor here. Doing the top first might have been an easier idea. That'll hold it in place for us. Now I got the screw, the little grounding washer thing, and the strap all in one. Attach that to the bottom. So, one problem. The little ground strap is touching our starter wire. So if we ever hit start, we have a problem. So let's see how to remedy that one. Also mounted on the top. There's a lot more room up there. Yeah, I'll do that. I think that was a much better idea. So that will get installed right there. So we get a wrench, tighten down our starter bolt. So this is a custom made wire harness. It, by custom made, made I mean it has no provisions for the VRO. I don't plan on adding one. Now, someday this engine will get changed out. If I sell the boat, if I get a newer, better, larger, faster motor, whatever the case may be, it'll probably get sold eventually. What I don't want is a random plug hanging out for the new buyer to say, oh, what's, what's rigged on this thing? Oh, I don't know about all that. Oh, you rigged this boat up. So, to ignore that, I got this. It needs to get routed under this lower motor mount, and I honestly have no idea how that's going to happen. There's not that much room in here. Well, let's, uh, let's give it a try, I guess. Huh. I could take my positive line out here, wrap that in later. It looks like that's getting hung up a little. And I don't think it's supposed to go under this mount anyway, so... I'll go ahead and take that out now. All 
Now this wire has been in my way for too long. Let's unplug this thing. Oops. All right, get that wire out of the way. If you're going to be doing this, you might want to consider doing this first before you install a bunch of wire and stuff. Actually, that wasn't that bad once I get that positive wire out of there. Alright, that's kind of how that's going. <clears throat> well, I guess that's pretty much it. So that'll go that way later. As we'll hook these up now. Our main wire. We got a uh, battery or ground wire. We got to install that. And then our starter will go there. So pretty pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's looking, looking good so far. Get this plugged in. It's our temp gauge there. Well, I don't think it's actually a temp gauge. I think it's just a temp sensor. So, usually what you'd see now is two, two nuts here. One to hold this down and a second one for the uh, positive battery wire. Our kit only came with one nut. Not a big deal. Yeah. What am I doing? Where's our wire? Let's get our electrical box opened up. So as you can see, we're pretty bare inside of there. So we need a whole bunch of parts now. The flywheel to install a stator. The stator is going to randomly generate electricity to charge the battery. We're also going to need to add a regulator, a voltage regulator, which regulates the unregulated voltage coming out of the stator to go back and charge the battery. With that, we're also going to need to install a uh, terminal block going across here to connect all the wires coming out of our new harness to our new stator and to our voltage regulator. A lot of stuff to do. So. Let me uh, we get a zip tie here. That's going to go because that's going to get in the way. Let's get that thing broken off first. So I'm going to finish routing the harness so it'll come out and up. So the first thing I'm going to do here is install a new used voltage regulator. That goes into this little hole right here. So if you're doing this, you want to make sure this hole is going to be free for the next screw. Alright, I also bought a new used terminal block off eBay. This was by far the cheapest thing I've bought for this engine. This was all of uh, like $5 shipped. So thank you uh, eBay seller for that one. Let's get the mounting screw out. That's a ground, by the way. Now it came with two new screws, so that was handy. Didn't have to hunt those down. Whether they're the right ones or not, that's a whole different story. So I did some part number comparing. The one that I had is the wrong one. I should should use a longer one. That's what this one is. So probably better I checked that. All right. We now I have a terminal block installed. Now we uh, have a little problem. Inside of our cover should have a diagram of how these wires go, which order. We don't have one, so to the service manual I go. So the solid yellow one goes first.
a solid yellow, no stripe. This one has a very faint gray stripe, and this one's a blue stripe. So our solid yellow is going on the first one. Now, this, the other side of this won't get attached to anything until we get a stator into the flywheel. So that'll be my next little step here after all this wiring's kind of controlled. Next one is our gray. And our gray from our harness shares that same plug. as does the uh, gray coming off of the uh, stator, but again, we'll do that later. And that leaves our blue one to go here. Press of elimination. Red is next. Oh, actually, we have two red wires coming off of our uh, harness. One has a blue purple stripe, the other one is solid. Our solid one shares that same wire. I think this one runs back to the starter solenoid, which then charges the battery. So this is kind of the important one. Well, they're all important, but... Alright. Our tan wire, which we unplugged earlier, was just an extension for this one. So let's get this unplugged. Now will plug in to here, like so. This red wire. Is our switched pos or fused positive, I believe. Oh yeah, I could get that stripe. Better it's unfused. I don't know. But anyway. Install that for now. More on this wire to come. Alright, now we also have this wire. The black with yellow stripe. That is the kill circuit. And it's like that. Pretty much every Johnson. Evner outboard they've made, I think even the date. Could be wrong, but never know. So this one currently runs down to our tiller harness. So we will unplug this, which I just broke. Oops. Yeah, whatever. So our tiller uh, now has a broken harness, but nothing in the world's coming off anyway. Actually, I should uh, pull that one out down there while I'm here. It's like a 7 sixteenths. Now, I'm, I use a phone to do my videos. I don't have one of those fancy dancy cameras. So, my phone, it looks like I'm just working on a pile of black here, but the computer usually you can see. So if you can't, there's a large ground screw down here that I'm taking off to get off the ground strap for the tiller. That fixed. Now plug in our new stop circuit. And I might as well put the little retaining clip back on. All right, we have one extra wire hanging out. This is the purple with white stripe, which is our choke. So I'm gonna route this out the top if I can. And it's gonna go behind this stuff. And come out down here. So our screw is right here for a little terminal block. Well, it's not really a terminal block, it's only got one thing, whatever. So I gotta get that screw out of there. 
little hard, but it's stuff in the way. Have to use a wrench. So, in case you didn't watch my video on the carburetors on this engine, that's when I installed this choke solenoid. So, probably should have done all this at the same time. What I'm doing here is loosening the clamp for it. My theory is that I'd be able to rotate it down enough to where I'd be able to get a screwdriver onto that thing. Because even a smallest wrench I have, which is a quarter inch, is way too big for that tiny little screw. So, that's kind of annoying. Let's tighten this back down and call it a day. I love this red lever here. That's the manual valve. So if you lose battery power and you got to rope start this thing, that's when you use that. I don't know if that wire is going to be in the way or not. No, no, it's fine. Well, that is pretty much uh, the electronics of the thing. The stator still needs to get in here, so I suppose that's next, but definitely making some progress. So let's uh, look at the battery, see if we have any life. Hope we do. So you have an arrow on the harness, and then you have an arrow which is covered up by a black gunk. So those plug in together. Now, our yellow goes to our starter solenoid here, so we should... Uh, look at that. Ah, music to my ears. So, so far so good. Now, purple with white stripe is our primer. Hopefully you can hear that, but it's working fine. And that's all we can test. <laughs> kind of lame test, I know, but, I mean, that's kind of neat. So, music to my ears. We need to install our grommet. This is our grommet for the electric start motor. It just kind of sits in. We got it backwards, of course. It sits in right there. All right. Well, calling it a day now. Got to go. Uh, Got to go home. Eat something. Starving. And then uh, tomorrow I will work on getting the stator installed. Okay. Next up, we got to get this flywheel off so we can get the stator installed. So pull the rope start bracket off first. Now the flywheel nut. Now we'll get a flywheel puller. Here is my uh, new used stator. I put some heat shrink over the wiring to kind of make it look a little better. It was pretty falling apart. I don't know if it works or not, but hopefully it does, because they are discontinued and not really easy to come by. Um, with that, we're also going to need two new screws. Got those. And, uh, yeah, now we'll take the plate apart. We need to run three more wires under this uh, clamp. So that's got to get loosened slash taken off. These screws are usually incredibly tight, so ah, keep that in mind. All right, now I gotta take off all of the Phillips on the top. Same situation, they're gonna be tight. At least, usually they are. And looks like one's gonna be giving me problems. Let's try it on a different angle with a different socket.
Yep, that's in there. I ground down the tip off of another screwdriver socket. It feels like it's fitting in there a little better. So, I'm going to try it again with this now modified one. And it just slips. Alright, so, another option to use the uh, butterfly impact wrench. Use that. Hoping that the uh, downward force as well as the uh, impact motion breaks it free. Well, I can step up the game a little bit to the big impact. Usually that breaks stuff though, so I don't like doing that, but okay, just popping right off right now. <laughs> oh, I did it. the rest of the way out. There's our wires. Look fine. We shouldn't lose any screws here. So now that big one's got to come off. You want to be careful with the electronics below it. So be wary of those. Uh, what do you apply pressure here? All right, now the ridiculously tight clamp is off. We can install our stator. Now somehow we got our wires through there. Don't know if putting this tubing on was a good idea. Yeah, it'll fit. What am I talking about? Looks like we have a little spacer inside of here. Also, I can see some rounded off screw heads here which means this was changed, adjusted, or replaced in the past, which means this may not be the one hour, yeah, one owner low hour outboard that was promised. But no biggie. So far the engine's in pretty good shape, so. Let's get our spacer out of there. Stator slid in. Right, stator is slid into place. So get these screws back in a little. Now there's wires behind this thing. You want to make sure that you uh, don't pinch them in there when you tighten these screws down. That, uh, that's not very good for them. Now I'm just getting them kind of loose right now. Just kind of get them where they're supposed to be. At least close. So I can get the uh, clamps and stuff back on. Alright. So that's about where it should go. The way the wire is sitting looks looks perfect. This is a used stator, so it's already uh, been in its home for not uh, previously, so it's kind of natural bend to the wires. Should be fine. New problem, all these wires are now bunched over. Now your wires are going to be in a different spot now, so you want to make sure that you're not going to crunch any wires when you put this on. So what I did was kind of jiggled them around and made them kind of sit straight again. Now we got to do our bottom clamp. Fit perfect. 
perfectly right like so. So it's wanting to rock back and forth a little bit. So don't quite know why. It should have a little latch to lock it down into place. That's what this little notch is. So I could have something wrong with my wire. Could be up a little too high. Or the screw's just not tight enough yet. Let's lean towards the screw not being tight enough yet. All right, that should be it for the wire. Plate looks okay. Slide this back on, down about where it came from, lining up the holes. There we go. If you notice, once it hit position, it just kind of fell where it's supposed to go. So that's good. around and get them all started to make sure everything's going to line up. And we still have pretty smooth operation, so nothing's binding or anything weird going on, so that's good. Are in. Double check the tightness of my wrench now. Yep, I feel fine. Alright, now, there's two ways you can realign all these parts. You can make sure they're flush with a little mounting boss here via your finger. It's one way to do it. Or you can get the special ring, which is 334994. I won't focus. There you go. That is similar to the old pointy style. Slips over. And it kind of replicates where things should be. I guess that's the theory behind it. Liking my stator. There we go. So if that fits, you don't have any problems with the flywheel. Right. Go up a little more for you, so you can see what's going on in there. And then you just kind of want to push all of your components up against it, and tighten down your screws. Let's get this ring off. And they feel good and flush. Now to put the flywheel back on, you're supposed to use some of the uh, OMC cleaning solvent and then put it on. I don't really feel like buying any of that stuff, so I'm just going to use some acetone. Probably should have done this before the plate went back on. But what are you going to do, you know? And we'll let it dry and get the flywheel back on.
Okay, flywheel nut torque for this engine is 100 to 105 foot-pounds. Now one struggle that I have is I cannot tighten that kind of force and hold the flywheel at the same time and finding someone to help me is just kind of a challenge. So I just use these torque limiting impact sockets. This is the uh, 100 pound one, so I use that to install it. Simply goes on your torque wrench. And there it goes under there. Now there's plenty of videos out on the internet where people test these things. They're not perfect, but it, it does get it within, you know, five pounds about where it needs to be, or 98%-ish. So, it'll be fine. Flywheel on. Didn't move the key, didn't mess with nothing. Acetone should be good and dry by now. Making sure there's nothing inside of our, uh, Flywheel magnets, any metal shavings or anything it picked up off the uh, desk. It looks fine. Line up the key and slide it back on. Now, notice I use no sealer on the paper. Not supposed to, but the manual does say you can use some on the uh, splines of the nut. So, since I don't really like corrosion, I'm going to be doing that just a little bit. That's the uh, gasket sealing compound, in case you're curious. Put our nut back on. <laughs> Go the right way. Yeah, that's, that's all there really is to it. Now we'll put the uh, rope starter base back on. Probably be using some gasket sealing compound on these too. I don't want any problems with this in the someday future. So now we got to hook up our new stator wires. Now this is uh, pretty easy to do. The colors, ever so slightly, are printed onto the wire. Not printed, but striped. So see how it's got a blue stripe? This one has nothing, and this one has a very faint gray stripe, which I'm not even going to try to have the camera see, but rest assured it's there. So that one is going to go here with the gray wire. Now that also is our tack signal. using a, uh, this is one of those cheap screwdrivers with the interchangeable bits. Fits this thing perfectly. So then we got the blue one and the no color one. Do another no color one now. Last one is the blue. And that's pretty much it, honestly. The only uh, challenging thing we got to do now is figure out how these wires are supposed to be routed inside of here. I don't know how much clearance there is on the uh, electrical cover box, but I think I'm going to find out here in a second. So make sure we have good range of motion there. Yeah, that looks fine. So we'll put that in there. There's an opening. Get our tiller wire out of there. There's an opening on the bottom for all these wires to come in through. So, it doesn't really matter how it goes in, just all needs to go in. Let's grab our cover box. Let's see how much play they give us. Clips in from the bottom. See the grooves? So it pulls up. Oh, yeah, that's easy.
Yeah, pretty, pretty easy to fit all that in there. Well, that is pretty much it. We know our starter works. We know our solenoid works. We'll have to check out the uh, the stator and the charging system later. We'll do that when it's a little closer time to start this thing. So that's it. It's, a, it's honestly a decent amount of work when you really think about it. But it doesn't seem that bad as you're going. Just a bunch of little connections you got to make. So if you got any questions, let me know. Subscribe and like, and uh, you have a good one.